Since the early days of .NET Core, writing APIs involved being able to return certain status codes. The way we did this has changed over time, and with the invention of minimal APIs, they introduced the iResult, which was meant to handle both minimal APIs and MVC in a sort of common way. But it became hard to test these individual components and APIs because iResult wasn't really saying what it returned except for the status code. In .NET 7, that changed with typed results. Type results are going to give us a better idea of the actual data that we're going to return. My name is Sean Wildermuth. Welcome to Code in Shorts. So we're going to be here inside of Visual Studio for our example. You could be using any sort of tool that allows you to do this, Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio for Mac, et cetera, even Writer. And we've got a pretty simple project here. It has some very small pieces. It has something like a data factory, which is sort of my interpretation of, of a DB context, just for the demo. And you can see I'm adding controllers and mapping controllers, but I also have this people API that's registering itself. And so the people API has a number of endpoints and I'm using them in this way because it's gonna be easier to test these because I have a static class I'm dealing with. Again, we're talking about unit testing, not integration testing. If this was integration testing, it wouldn't matter because we would just be going through the web server, but I wanna be able to do some unit tests here. And there's also a controller that has just one method, but uses the same idea and uses that magic I result just like we did in the middle APIs. So what does this look like? So when we run this, this is an example of one of the API that gets people. I can also get a singular person and I can also show jobs. Just some sample data that we can get through it. There's also a post, but we're not gonna get into how we're gonna test that because I, I really want to explain to you what is going on. This is all compatible with pre.NET 7, all the code we've looked at here, but let's look at our actual unit tests. So I have a couple of tests here, four in fact, and the idea here is I'll be able to call the actual API method, and by calling this, I can get out an I result that should have the information that I wanna be tested. See, I wanna do things like making sure that the status code is right, the value, Etc. right? Simple testing. But the problem is the I result needs to have a way to get the data out of it. And so I've crafted up this simple get response method where I'm going to take that I result, I'm going to create a context and execute the I result so I get the actual data back. And then once I do that, I can look at context object, get the response, status code, et cetera, and then return, in this case, a tuple that has the two pieces of data that I need to test, the status and the actual data that's being returned. And this all works, right? If I run all these tests, they all work fine. But I don't like how complex this is. And this is one of the places that, that typed results really comes into its own. So without having to change the APIs, I can actually, because I'm .NET 7, use this typed result. And so let's change this a little. I'm gonna create a return value, and I'm gonna call that people API here. And I'm gonna get that I result instead of the needing to use the get response. And I'll leave that there. And what I wanna do here is say, I want to see if the return value as OK person. What the heck is that? This is a typed response. And so I can look at this and go, this API, as far as I'm concerned, has to return an OK when I call it in this way. And it has to be returning a 200, right? If this ends up being null, I can just assert for it, right? If it gets past this, I can assume that it has data and the status code is 200. I could still be testing this by testing 200, because in the case of type results, the OK is returning a status code as a number instead of as a enumeration. 
And then the rest of this should just work. It's still working in the same way, but we don't have to go through the trouble of crafting up a context, executing it, and then getting the data from that context. So this code becomes much, much simpler, right? And if we've done this right, let's go to our person returns result. Let's just run that to make sure it still works. And as we can see here, it succeeded. And this ultimately allows us to make this no longer async since we don't need anything to be async here. Now we might want it to be async if get person was an asynchronous call and I've decided that they wouldn't be in this case, but certainly in a lot of APIs that, that will be the case. And so let's just do it to the other two so we can actually see what's going on here. So I'll say to make this void, no more awaits. And I'll just say get person as okay person, right? As not found. That's interesting, right? We're actually returning another one of these types that is going to tell us what we expect it to have. So, I mean, we could certainly change this to 404. But we could also just assert this not null result. These first three are all using minimal API, but what does it look like for MVC? Very much the same idea. You're still going to need to craft up the controller instead of just calling a static function. But here we're going to be able to just call get, and we can assume it's going to be OK of jobs. In fact, I innumerable of jobs, right? Because that's the very type that we're actually returning. We expect it to be okay, and that the data type is gonna be I innumerable. So we can, again, probably get rid of this since it returning an okay assumes that it is okay as well. And let's just make sure that the result is that type, and then the rest of this pretty much falls through. And it doesn't matter that you're using a controller in this case, because they're both actively doing the same thing. It's returning a result by not found or OK, right? Now, I can make sure that this is a typed result by just adding typed in front of the results here, right? And this is still going to return an I result, even though we're telling it underneath the covers, because a type result not found is still implementing the I result interface. But we could be more specific here, and this would make this could allow us to eliminate the casting, right? So what this really is returning is a result of OK job, or I should say I numerable job, or not found, or bad request, right? The type that's returned here can contain the different kinds of results so that you can actually look at the return value here and get more information than you might imagine. So what does this do to our unit test down here? And because get is now returning that complex object, we actually have to look at dot result for that casting. Because in the case of multiple types, it's still going to contain an I result that you can then use for these types of tests. And let's go ahead and change that to void since we're not no longer using any of the async stuff. So let's see if this works. So if we run all these tests, we can now see that they've all succeeded. Now there are some other benefits here that you can make this be descriptive of what you can do, but you don't need to. The real magic is in this. But if you want to be able to look with reflection to see what kind of the result is actually by looking at the get method, not just the result of what's in there, you could imagine other tooling could really benefit from these strongly typed versions. But the typed results here are enough to allow you to do unit tests in a more efficient way. So this is another little feature I so as a footnote someplace, I just learned about it, so I wanted to teach all of you about it. Hopefully you find it useful. If you don't find it useful, please tell me why in the comments below. Are they just making things more complex or simplifying things so you can do things like unit testing more efficiently without having to just do integration testing on your APIs? 
And that's all for today on Coding Shorts. Again, my name is Sean Wildermuth. Thanks for coming. Mm-hmm.